So we're gonna go ahead and get started. As Andy said, my name is Nicole Slater and I'm a strategic marketing consultant and I primarily work with artists. And I find that artists have a really hard time um, getting their message out to the world and promoting themselves. So my job is to help you learn the skills, like she said, the tools, the tips, the tricks to make it easier and hopefully more fun. So let's get started. There's lots to learn when it comes to Instagram. And today we're going to just talk about the basics. Um, there we go. So I love this. I always start my presentations with this. Um, this is a wonderful comic by Liz Fossling. And when you're thinking about learning about marketing or social media or self-promotion, you know, if you start today over time, just like, you know, compounding interest, it's going to grow. Versus if you start when you're ready, obviously, uh, you know, it's going to take some time. You're never going to feel like posting on social media. You're never going to want to like super sell your work or, you know, get it out there. It's always sometimes a hassle for certain people. And that's OK. Um, just like compounding interest and finances that that age old saying, like, no one cares about your money as much as you do. Well, no one cares about your marketing as much as you do. Um, every artist that I've ever worked with says the same thing, which is, I just want to be in my studio and I just want to paint. I just want to do art. I want to hire someone to go, you know, handle it for me. And I, or I just want to get a gallery and they'll deal with it. Well, as you guys know, the landscape is definitely changing with art and with marketing. And artists have so many incredible tools to market themselves. And Instagram is part of that. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. But just remember, no one cares about your marketing as much as you do, right? So if you don't care about your marketing, then not a lot of other people are going to care about it either. So it's important to take it seriously. And the first part is just kind of learning the language. So this is what we're going to talk about today. Um, so just some housekeeping uh, real quick. If you have a question, I do have some sections built in here where you can ask questions. Um, if you, if it's a burning question, you don't understand something, feel free to raise your hand and Andy or Robert can um, unmute you. There's also going to be a question and answer section at the end. So, um, you know, feel free to just hold it if you can. So um, today we're going to learn about the difference between a hashtag and a social media handle or tagging someone. How to post effectively about your art and which hashtags to use. I always, I always get that question. Well, what should I hashtag anyways? Well, you're going to learn today. So that's very exciting. How to incorporate Instagram reels into your social media strategy. And how to use Instagram as a research tool to interact with collectors, curators, and galleries. So let's get started. So love this quote. The limits of my language mean the limits of my world. And when you think about marketing and Instagram lingo, if you don't know the difference between a hashtag or a tag or this or that, you're really limiting your world. You're limiting the way that you can express yourself, how many people you can reach. So just by learning these basics that I'm going to go over today is really going to help you uh, get your message out there effectively, right? I know a lot of people and a lot of times they're juggling second careers, they're parents, they have other things going on, other hobbies. So you have a limited amount of time to use your marketing skills. So might as well make it as effective as possible by understanding the language and practicing some of these tips and these tricks that we're using today. So first off, what is a hashtag? So a hashtag is simply a keyword phrase it's spelled out, very importantly, without spaces, no spaces, and a pound sign in front of it. So if we look at this uh, painting, I took this at the Art Institute in Chicago. It's of John Singer Sargent. And um, here's the hashtags that I used in this piece. Hashtag Art Institute of Chicago, hashtag John Singer Sargent, hashtag Impressionism, Impressionist, Portraiture, and Plein Air, etc. So if you see, you might not be able to, but these are actually blue. So when you use a hashtag, what it does is it makes it a link. I can actually click this if I was on Instagram. I could click Art Institute of Chicago, and it will take me to a page where everyone in the entire world that's talking about hashtag Art Institute of Chicago, what they're posting. You can see in real time and chronological order what people are talking about, you know, impressions or famous art or portraiture. So it really connects you to larger communities. And it allows other people to find your work. If you're not using hashtags, 
then it's harder for Instagram to know what this post is about. They can't share it to as many people. And then also, you know, these communities where people are checking out hashtag impressionist, they're not going to see your painting or your post if you don't use a hashtag. Just uh, really quickly for hashtags, you want to put them at the bottom of your post. And usually I recommend maybe five to 10. Please don't use the same hashtags every single time in a giant block that's this long, that's 50 hashtags in a row, overkill, you know, just as, as much as possible, just, you know, the basics. So um, if anyone wants to raise their hand and answer this question, um, what hashtags would you use to, if you were gonna post a picture of the Mona Lisa? And one thing to think about is how would you Google this? If you were on Google and you wanted to pull up an image of the Mona Lisa, what words would you use? So thinking about either topic, the colors, the style of art, or maybe the location, this is at the Louvre. Does anyone have any suggestions on what hashtags to use if I was gonna post this? And I might need Andy or, or Robert to unmute. I don't know if anyone is raising their hand. I can't see that. No, no one's raising their hand. <laughs> All right, we got a shy audience. That's okay. So if I was gonna hashtag this, I think the first one would be hashtag Mona Lisa. That seems pretty easy, right? This is what it is. Hashtag Lulu, you know, the Louvre. Hashtag Paris art or hashtag Da Vinci. Um, hashtag classic art or famous art. Um, start thinking about how you're going to Google it, what search terms you're going to use. All right, now the second thing you need to understand is a tag. A tag is a way to notify someone that you mentioned them. You use the at symbol in the beginning. So for instance, my um, tag, if you wanted to post about me right now and take a photo and put it on Instagram and tag me, my tag would be at Nicole Slater Consulting. That at symbol um, and then their social media handle, like Nicole Slater Consulting. Think of it like their address. So it's specifically going to them. So for instance, I used at Art Institute G, which stands for the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, it's really exciting when you tag people because they actually get a notification. It lets them know that you're talking about them. So if you're at a gallery, let's say, and you see a bunch of cool art, tagging those artists, tagging the gallery. Um, gives them a notification and lets them know that you are doing your due diligence, you're promoting them, you're part of the team. So it's really exciting. So how to know if you've been tagged? Um, on Instagram, there's a little heart button, and that's where all your notifications are. So um, post Mark, I don't know if you guys know Mark Acetelli, he's at the Bindex building here in LA, very talented painter. Um, I replied on one of his posts and he said, hey, thanks, Nicole. Um, but I got a notification. Also, Ann Weber notified, you are most welcome, Nicole. So that's wonderful. So when you were thinking about tagging and thinking about why would this be beneficial? Why is this part of the strategy? People will know you're talking about them. It's a great way to support other artists, which we're all about. That's why we're all on here, right? And to get the attention of curators, galleries, and collectors. Let's say you've been really interested in a particular gallery. You've been going to all their opening receptions, shaking hands, kissing babies. This is just another way for the gallery to know that you're part of their ecosystem. If they get a notification that you tag them, then they might look at your profile. They might look at your paintings. It's a really easy, passive way to get eyeballs on your art and what you're promoting. So highly recommend tagging people. Um, also just something to think about as artists on Instagram, your social media handle. If your social media handle is not your name, um, it's really hard for people to find you and it's hard for people to tag you. So if my um, social media handle was like Tiger House 9 or something like that, no one's gonna know or associate that with Nicole Slater my tag is Nicole Slater Consulting. Much, much easier for people to tag you and find you and know who you are. So there's actually two ways you can tag people and both are important. If you have the time and energy, I highly recommend doing both ways. First way is the one, first way we talked about, which is tagging people in the description. 
but you can actually tag their photos too. When you go to post, um, after you write the description, right below is a little section that says tag photo. Um, in any photo that people are tagged, this little symbol down here will appear. And you can actually search for their name. So if I wanted to tag Carolyn Mason Art, I would hit tag people, type in Carolyn, and this little section that says her name, when people view this, they can actually click off. On Carolyn Mason's profile also, there's a whole tag section. So um, then other people can see it. So I can give you a, a great example. So if I go to my profile. This is my profile. Feel free to follow, comment, like, comment, share. I'm just kidding. Uh, here's my regular posts. But on the right here is a tag section. This is anyone who's ever tagged me. So how does this relate? If you tag people in the actual photo with their name, you know, next to their face, it will actually show up on their profile. So it's another way for people to describe, you know, find you. Um, it's another people, a way for people to associate your name with your face, especially if you go to a lot of art receptions and stuff like that. Um, this does take a little bit of extra time, but if you're only posting once a week or twice a week, then you can take the time, you know, and just tag people and let people know that you're promoting them. So, um, I'm going to just stop right there for a second. Are there any questions right now about hashtags and tagging? I'm more than happy to explain things or go over things again. Does anyone have any questions? Looks like there's a question from Jane Zabo. Go for it, Jane. Hello. I was just taking notes and I missed seeing, I saw where the tag thing was, but then I went to look at it on my phone and I don't see... Um, where to go to see where people have tagged you. It looked like it was a header and I don't see that on my. So on your profile, you'll have posts, reels, saved and then tagged. I'm just gonna do a screen grab of that so I can find it later. Thank you. No problem. That's really great. It'd be really interesting for everyone. That's a great exercise. Thanks for that, that idea, Jane, of go and search your tag section. See who's been talking about you, who's tagged you. Um, maybe they've tagged you in something you don't want to be seen in, or it's a very unattractive photo of you. You can edit that, but it's always good to know, you know, who's, so who's tagged you. you. Look on, on the computer, it says tag, but on your phone, it's just a little, like a portrait of a person. It's an icon. Yeah. I, yeah. I see it now and I've never noticed that. So thank you both. Okay. <laughs> and Great. I mostly do it on my phone, so. Great. And for people who don't like using their phone, you know, Instagram now you can actually start posting uh, just regular posts on your desktop. So if you have trouble typing or you you don't like using your phone, you're not as confident, post on uh, on desktop. So it's a really good feature. Are there any other questions? Okay, I'm gonna keep moving on. So on Instagram, there's three main types of posts. I'm pretty sure everyone here is used to the regular feed posts. This is what shows up on our, our you know, nine squares or whatever, which, which you can see. These are regular feed posts. Um, this is the bread and butter of Instagram. Um, so I'm not gonna go over that. Um, stories, that is when you go home you can see, see all these people's faces up here? This means with this little, if you've ever wondered what this ring around someone's profile means, that means that they have stories that are live. Um, stories only last 24 hours and then they're gone. And that's because Instagram copied Snapchat. Um, and it's just meant as a way to, if you have a lot of posts and you don't wanna clog up your feed, Let's say you go to Disneyland and you want to show every ride or you go to an art fair and there's so many artists. You can post them all on stories, you can tag them and then they're gone. So stories um, are really great for events um, to highlight other artists, artists supporting artists, right? If you go to a gallery and see something you really like, you know, if you're an artist, you want your feed to predominantly be your art. You don't want other people to mistake. You can still uh, do you know, a random post here and there that says, hey, here's the cool art that I saw all week. But you definitely want your feed to be about your art. So stick it in stories. 
Next, Reels. That's the one I really want to talk about because this is the newest one, and this is how you put video on Instagram. Usually, uh, before you would be able to just do a video post, but Instagram has converted everything to Reels. Why? Because they're copying TikTok. That's what Facebook and Instagram do. They're trying to take out their uh, popular, you know, their competition. So Reels are the most important and integral uh, posts that you can do to grow your following. I suggest using only video, but you can do slideshows. Some people are very successful with that, but I think video is a little bit more interesting. Reels are served to mostly people who are not following you. So it's uh, a really great way to get new eyeballs. I don't know if you guys can hear the birds in the background, but I think there's a mockingbird right outside my window. Um, so versus if you post on your regular feed, you know, here, this is only going to show to the people that follow me. But if I post a Reels, this is going to be shown to a bunch of people. So if we look back on my, this Reel got 2,000 views and that one got 500. And, you know, some, some can go viral. This one uh, I did with Ann Weber got 41,000. So Reels, definitely 41,000 don't follow me. So Reels are just a great way to get more eyeballs. Um, I, for me, there's a lot of different ways to do reels. You can like shoot in reels, but this is how I do it. I keep it very simple. All I do is use video uh, that I've already had and I just upload it into Instagram and uh, edit it down and throw a song on and that's it. That's the majority of the most of the reels that I do. Today, I'm not going into the detail of exactly how to do all of that. At the end, I'll have my email address and you can contact me and I have some resources to learn that. Um, but just know that if you're not using reels, this is the time, this is your cosmic two by four to learn how to use reels. Um, and the most important thing when you're thinking about maybe going to your show or another art exhibit is to use vertical video. So if you can see my face, vertical video literally means just taking your phone and using it vertically. Do not shoot video like this. It does not work. It does not look good on reels. It won't be shown to a lot of people. So just vertical video. When you're capturing content, you want to go so slow. And I'm not even kidding. When you pan, just so incredibly slow. Because if you go like this and you upload that video, it's too fast. So like literally this slow. And you pan around a room at an art exhibit where you're showing a piece of art. Very steady, very slow. But always vertical. So I want to give you some ideas of what people are doing on Instagram. And I have a bunch of other um, examples I, I've picked up here as well. So let's see what other people are doing. Let's get some inspiration in here. So this is really simple. They just took really quick videos and a couple of photos. And they just put a GIF, uh, they searched for a GIF right on there, new work. This is probably a medium to advanced level, but just to give you some idea of how you can do an Instagram reel. Here's another example. So that was really, that's a jump cut. So these are two different videos. He turns, he's wearing the same thing, and then uh, it has all of the artwork. This is only two videos, but it looks really fun. It's really not that hard to do. So again, just a really quick video. See how they're moving a little too fast. But if you don't have a new show or a new event or you're not you know, sure what to post, you can just do a quick work in progress. You know, you can show your process. I, for my clients, I found that uh, process videos are pretty much the, the, the best thing that you can do, like a quick time lapse. Or if you don't know how to use your camera that well, just doing a turnaround with your art. This is three seconds. 
She just turned around. That's it. That's the whole reel. You know, um, I would like to see a little bit more information on this. This doesn't really tell me a lot about it or how I can buy it or how much it is or why she painted this or the inspiration. But the idea itself is pretty simple. I'm going to go through a couple more. So this is several videos, but it's really cool to see that process in those different camera angles. It makes it a lot more dynamic. The sky's the limit. If she can do an Instagram reel, so can you. So those are just a couple examples. Um, I'm going to go into content um, in a second about like what, you know, what to post. Um, but does anyone have any questions right now about Instagram reels? Yeah, it looks like there's a question from Lori Markman. Awesome. Go for it, Lori. Hi. <clears throat> How long should a video be? That's a great question. Um, different ideologies on this. I have found lately that the shorter, the better. Unfortunately, our attention span is even shorter <laughs> than it was a couple years ago since the invention of TikTok. So before, I would say like 10 seconds. But honestly, I'm seeing the reels that are the shortest, like three to four, are doing the best. And the reason for that is when Instagram is looking at, is this a successful reel? Their metric they're using is, did the person complete the video? So if the video is shorter, there's a higher probability that they will complete the video. Um, so I'm seeing short videos doing really well. However, if you're doing a process video or you want to share something that's longer, go for it. You shouldn't just post to try to appease the algorithm. That's a quick way to unhappiness. You should post what brings you joy and what shows you off as an artist in your craft. Um, but I have seen that shorter videos work better. Thanks, Lori. Uh, any other questions? OK, if they are, just jump in. So let's talk content. So there's three different types of content that I recommend, and it's really good to have a good mix, uh, equal mix of all of these. It's direct response, brand awareness, and fluff, my favorite. So direct response, I think this is what a lot of times people have that ick factor to, where they don't want to feel like a car salesman, or they don't want to feel like they're pushing their art or their you know, burdening people. And I think that comes from just some bad experiences with direct response. Um, you know, it's essentially wanting your followers to buy something, go somewhere or react in some way. So if your whole social media strategy is always do this for me, buy this thing, go to this place, look at me, blah, blah, blah. That's very exhausting. And uh, people will get that kind of marketing ick factor. But if you don't ever post direct response, you don't ever tell people that your art is for sale or that you have a gallery show, you're not going to get very far. So this is really integral. We just want to make sure it's balanced. So some examples of direct responses. I just finished this piece. DM me for, for inquiries. Uh, DM means direct message. Send me a private message. Join me this Saturday for the opening of my new show or which piece resonates with you more? Comment below. Those are some examples. So this is important. You just wanna make sure that you don't post once a month and that it's only, hey, I have a show coming up. We wanna, you're a more exciting version. You're, you're a, a bigger, brighter version. Your life is bigger than that. And we wanna show people that. So the second kind is brand awareness. And this really shows that you're a part of a larger community and it's not directly about you. So it shows that you're part of the art industry and the art business maybe, but it's not like, hey, look at me, buy my thing, do this thing. 
So some examples are a posting about fellow artists work on or shows. I really believe in this. I think it's really important for us artists to support each other and promote each other. Um, other examples are tips and tricks, you know, coming from a place of service in your social media. A lot of the artists that I work with have been an artist for 30 to 40, 50 years. So, you, you know, if you've been an artist for a long time, you probably know a really good technique to clean your brushes or to frame something or um, a service that you use, you know, or something that saves you time. Um, giving those tips and tricks and kind of coming from a place of service also really helps in that it factor of marketing and feeling like, oh, I don't want to do it, Ugh, you know. But if you're trying to help people and you're being of service, a lot easier to do that. It feels a lot easier and better in your body. So um, highlight the people who help you, framers, movers, galleries, mentors. Um, I don't know if you guys know Ann Weber. She's one of my clients. She's really good about this. If anyone helps her out or, you know, she sees an, an artist that she really likes, she makes sure to use her Instagram following so people know that. Um, any press or articles um, that you have, maybe you've got something in Art and Cake or Artillery or, or something, you know, posting about that, that's brand awareness. If you go to art galas, fundraisers, if you're on the board of directors meetings, but just when you're looking at brand awareness content, make sure it demonstrates who you are, your values, how you're integral to this community. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, and then the last one is my favorite because it's ridiculous, it's fluff content. So um, it's positive content. It's, you know, people have an emotional connection to it. This is my dog, Tom Petty. I love him very much. Um, and fluff content is important. It breaks up the monotony of kind of look at me. So if all of your content is fluff content, then people are not going to take you seriously as an artist. Um, if it's all grandbabies and, you know, flowers or your dog, then people are going to think that you don't, you're not serious about your art. But you can use fluff content or kind of light content in your strategy to kind of break things up, especially if you don't have things going on, if you don't have a show going on, or you're not working on new work, you don't have anything, you know, related, throw some fluff in there. So, you know, a picture of your cute dog in your studio, and this, this might, you know, studio mate for the day or neighbor, or a sunset during a recent hike that inspired your last painting. Maybe you picked up a leaf on it and you, then you drew it, you know, so that, that's interesting. A toddler looking at your art, you know, like the next generation of art collectors is currently at my studio. Or, you know, maybe your art with a quote you really like. Um, fluff, you know, makes the world go round. There's a lot of negativity online, so it's, it's nice to have some positivity. So, um, any questions about content? It looks like Lori has a question. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I love questions. Go for okay. it. So, initially you said that our Instagram feed should mostly be about us. But with brand awareness, we're adding in all these other people. So what's what's like a good ratio? It kind of depends on on on, you know, ideally, maybe like 33, like split down the, you know, the triple, like 33, 33, 33. But if you are a high level artist, if you are the, you know, only in blue chip galleries and you have, you know, $100,000 paintings or something like that, you probably don't want to be posting about your dog, right? You know, like, so it, it just depends on what rings true for you. Um, if you're not the top of the top and you have a life outside, like I don't only post about art in my workshops. I post about my dog. I do axe throwing. You know, I have other things and other parts of my personality that um, I like to show on my social media. Not That's not for everybody. But I think brand awareness in general is for everyone because this is, again, saying that I'm part of the community. I'm part of the art community. Um, if you want to post about fellow artists, maybe just use stories, you know, or tips and tricks is every once in a while. These are just all ideas 
for you to kind of find your brand voice. And that's one of the ways that I work with artists kind of on one-on-one -on -one consulting is defining like what your brand voice is, what are your values? So when we post, we make sure that we're staying within your values. If you're a very serious artist about climate change or, you know, something like that, then, um, you know, maybe a picture of your dog isn't the best for brand awareness, but maybe you went to a fundraiser for climate uh, change and you took a picture with the president of the foundation. That's a great post. So um, it just kind of depends on, on what your values are, but I think it's important just to have a mix of all of it, or at least know that these options exist, you know? So I would just say, play with it, see what people respond to. I, I think that's a really, this is a really good subject to bring up is brand awareness, because I think a lot of artists don't even know what their brand is. Yes. They, they know what they paint, they have body of work that they work in, or they have a voice, but they really don't even know what that means in terms of brand. So um, I don't know, we, we kind of talk about that a little bit in Keep Hi Pi, and I know, Nicole, you talk about that with your clients, um, but I, I would say if you have more questions about brand you can either get a hold of nicole later or you can join uh um myself uh on my open often office hours once a month um ray belder who's also here does uh, a salon uh every tuesday he can also talk he can also speak to brand so if you have if you don't feel like you know what your brand is reach out one of us can help you on that i think that's so key um and definitely knowing how to speak about your art First, you have to know what your brand is, and then you have to learn the next step is how to speak about your art. Because if you don't know how to speak about your art, how is that gallery supposed to speak about it? I learned that from uh, Mike O'Connor, who's on this call as well. Um, so yeah, branding is really, really important. So thank you for that, Andy. That was, that was great. There's a lot of free resources out there for you. So um, we're at 6.36 right now. Okay, so we're, we're chugging right along. So, um, Instagram is not just a place to post about your dog or your art. It's actually a really wonderful research tool. And when you're thinking about getting into that gallery or getting into um, different spaces where there's a lot of gatekeepers, and as we know, in the art world, there is a lot of gatekeepers, right? Um, we can use Instagram as a tool. And I don't think enough people know about this or use this. So, Artadia very famous. A lot of people apply to this each year. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever been to their website, but guess what? They list all of their jurors um, from every year, from every city. So usually if you're on the, you know, if you're a juror, you're probably someone of note. You're probably somebody who is a um, curator or a high-end artist or a gallerist, or you're on a museum. So getting to know jurors from famous, uh, you know, applications and grants and stuff, probably a good idea. So um, I just clicked this. This is the uh, 2020 winner. So for this juror, if we search this person's name, I suggest doing this on desktop, by the way. So I'm going to search this person's name. So I'm going to go to Instagram. And then on the left-hand side, there's a search feature. I'm going to paste this in here. And there they are. Now, not every curator is going to be on there. A lot of curators and museum curators especially are not on social media because they don't want to be bombarded. <laughs> but a lot of the younger people are. So, you know, uh, faculty at UCLA Art, Curator, Art Science Center, LA County Arch, Editor at Extra, Author, uh, Decolonizing Culture, wow, this is someone really interesting. Maybe this is somebody that, oh, I have 58, 59 people in common with them. This is definitely somebody that I would like to follow and maybe they'll follow me back. Maybe they'll check out my art, you know? So you can start using um, Instagram as a place to search for people and follow them. And hopefully they'll follow you back, like a couple of their posts. Um, one thing that I see a lot of people doing, which I highly don't recommend, do not like 25 of their photos in a row. You look like a stalker. So don't do that. Just a couple, you know, uh, don't like all of it because then it just takes over their notification. I know you're enthusiastic and it, it's great, but um, coming from a, a millennial perspective, I wouldn't do that. So um, there's lots of different jurors. Also, uh, New American Paintings. 
they have all of their jurors listed along. These aren't necessarily all current, but you know, it says where their affiliation is. So maybe there's a museum that you've been looking at. This tells you who the chief curator is. Maybe they're on Instagram. Using that search feature is really, really great to see who are the gatekeepers. If you're looking at a gallery, maybe they have their assistant who only makes $15 an hour and doesn't care a lot, you know, but they're probably on Instagram. You can befriend them and ask, hey, what's the best way to submit my work? You know, do you guys like it in person? Are you guys taking submissions? Do you like paper? Do you not? You know, what's the best way to introduce myself to this gallerist? Lots of ways to get around that. Also on Instagram, if you're looking for art advisors, maybe to sell your, your work through, you can literally just search art advisor. There's tons of profiles here where they have art advisory or art advisor in their name. So that's a really good way. Um, you can start a conversation with them. Maybe look at a previous post and say, hey, I really love this. Oh, we have this person in common, you know. And then eventually you can ask them like, hey, how can I submit my work? I'm really interested. I love the, the stuff that you do. So just kind of thinking of how you can find people. Now, if you're gonna find people, um, this is the most important down here, very important. Don't be creepy. Um, you know, don't like, you know, go up to somebody and say, hey, I saw you posted this, you know, posted you'll be here, so I showed up. Or you don't know me, but I've been watching you and you should show my art at your gallery. Too much, you know? Instagram's a tool, but we don't need to be like too uh, clingy too much too soon, right? Ideally, you have someone that can introduce you to that person. So figure out who you want to know. Um, when I work with artists, I, I, I personally just use, you know, Google for everything, Google Docs, Google Sheets, but you can use Excel as well. I create an Excel document and just list all the galleries that they want to get into or that they're interested in, all the museums and institutions. And then we start finding those curators and putting that in their Excel sheet, start finding their email address and asking them, you know, if they want to be part of, you know, your email newsletter. There's a lot of different ways, but just start collecting information. Um, find out what you have in common with these people. Um, follow people that are associated with them. You know, if it's, again, you're trying to ingratiate yourself into their ecosystem. People are more likely to trust you and give you the time of day if you have mutual friends. So just something to think about, right? Um, where do they hang out? Do they tag locations in their posts? Maybe they're going to an art fundraiser, um, you know, that you can attend. Again, within normal society boundaries, right? Do not be creepy. But you can kind of find out what they like, what they don't like, what they're interested in. Instagram can really tell you a lot about a person. So um, I have a lot of other things to say, but I wanted to make sure that the presentation was, you know, short enough because this is a lot of content. So um, I want to open it up for questions. And if you have something specific or you just don't understand something, you want me to review something, or if you just like, Tell me about this. I can pontificate uh, as needed. Um, if you're interested in emailing me, if you're interested in working, I do work one on one with people. Um, I do have a wait list right now, but send me an email um, or you can check out my website at NicoleSlaterConsulting.com or follow me on Instagram. But I would love to like dive in to your marketing questions if you have anything specific. If anyone wants to raise their hand. All right, I think we have one from Catherine. You want to unmute? Yes. Hi. Thank you. Um, I need to do a complete reset on my Instagram account. Mm -hmm. It's my name. Um, but when I started it, I wasn't focusing on my art. So it's just a big mishmash. And I haven't posted for several months. So um, is it it, I, I was thinking of just like literally doing a post where it said, you know, reset. <laughs> Um, for the people who follow me, uh, I don't know what your advice is on that. Riff. So, um, you kind of like want to reintroduce yourself to, to the audience. That's your question. Like how to reintroduce yourself or how to reset. Yeah. And refocus to my art. I'm, it's a lot of food and 
pet. I think there was a lot of food during the pandemic. I don't blame you. Right. Um, Yeah, I think a lot of people are resetting and a lot of people uh, take breaks from social media. It's really common now to have mental health breaks. Um, So like part of the culture is like, like you said, reintroducing and resetting. So I would just, you know, do a simple photo either of yourself or you with your art or um, and just kind of talk about that of why you took a break or why what you want to do in the future. Um, You know, I just had to reset, you know, during the pandemic or whatever. Um, But right now I'm really focusing. I'm so inspired right now. I'm really focusing on my art and I wanted to share what I've been posting lately or what I've been uh, creating lately. I want to take you behind the scenes my st- in my studio um, and show, you know, what I've been working on. You know, I'm looking forward to reconnecting. I'm looking forward to um, seeing people in person at art exhibits and stuff like that. But if you can kind of create a story of why you're reconnecting and why that's important and what you've been creating, maybe a little mystery, I think that would be a really cool post. All right, I think Julie has a question. Yes, thank you. Great, um, uh, I don't wanna say pitch, but it's a great presentation. That you thank have. you. Um, very articulate and um, appreciate all your advice. I have um, a solo show coming up and I'm just wondering about frequency of posting about it and targeting people and if how to properly use the, the at symbol in that context. So you have a solo show at a gallery. So, you know, obviously the first post is letting people know, save the date or something like that. And then when you're in your, in your description, you want to make sure to uh, use the at symbol at whatever gallery it's at, you know, at the cool gallery, you know. Um, So like one post could be save the date, just letting people know it's coming up. Um, And then the following post can be what you're doing to get ready. So if you're, you know, finishing up the last pieces, one of the best um, tools that people can use is time lapse on their camera, because you just kind of set it up with an angle of you creating your art and you set it and forget it. And then, you know, you work on your art for a couple hours and you come back and it makes a 10 second video and it looks really cool. And it does really well on Instagram stories or sorry, Instagram reels. Okay, so thank you. if you could do like a time lapse of talking about creating the art or, you know, you don't have to show the final product if you don't want to. Not everyone does, you know, because they want to go to the gallery to see the final product. Right. 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 Um, one thing you definitely don't want to do is if the gallery creates a graphic like um, Andy created this, you know, obviously, or had her team create this for Instagram. If I posted this photo 50 times or whatever, or even like more than once that would really clog up um, my feed visually. So I would just try to stay away from text, you know, post, if you have a flyer like this, maybe post it once, but don't post it 10 times to your feed. So a save the date, a process, or like maybe, you know, oh, the art is being shipped. It's on its way, you know, to the gallery. I can't wait to see you this Saturday. Um, And then maybe kind of a last or a couple last ones of just, you know, two days away, can't, I'm so excited or a photo or a video of you hanging up the installation, you can build a lot of buzz. Um, and then during the actual show, as much as possible, and I know it's so hard to remember this when you're in the moment because everyone's coming up to you, um, get photos with other people, especially other artists or curators, or gallerists, important people. Um, it's worth finding you know, somebody that, a friend that can come along or hiring someone for just a couple bucks just say, hey, can you take photos of me, you know, at this, you know, with other people and they have your phone and they can take video just so you can like gather as much as content as possible, because who knows when your next solo show is going to be for a lot of artists. It's a lot of time in between. So just having someone, an on-site journalist to get videos and photos and you'll use that. You can use that stuff for the next year, you know, in Instagram Reels or Throwback Thursdays but just gathering as much content as you can from this experience. After the opening, you know, thank you so much. Post the photos of people, you know, um, that came out and hey, it's open till May, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then definitely, um, you know, this should also be followed up with email, email marketing, letting people know about the opening. 
So, um, and hopefully, you know, reaching out to press. Um, I did a talk with uh, Shana Neist-Drambrot and she, um, with Art Cloud, and she gave a really great, the three, three, three rule. So three months, three weeks, and three days. That's what she likes people to message her about, you know, the show that's coming up to see if she's going to cover it or if you're going to promote it to the press. Three months, three weeks, and three days. And that can also be for your email, you know, out to your email list. Um, always good. You don't always have three months notice, but it's, it's a good way to frame it to let people know about it. So hopefully that answers your question. You answered more. That was great. Thank you. Okay, great. I love when people have specific questions because then I can just, you know, go off. Does anyone else have any other questions? We got 10 minutes. Gina. Hi, Gina. Hi. Can you hear me? I can. Good to see you. Okay. Um, I think a lot of us have this problem is these bots following us. Yes. There's driving a lot of bots lately. Is driving me up the wall because I think it's interfering um, for having the real people following me. Um, so what I've been doing is blocking. I've noticed some people that I've been following ha are having accounts impersonated. So I contact the person yes, and then I report them um, that they reported to Instagram. So, I mean, what, what else can I do to, because I, I mean, like I told you, I mean, I eliminated like 140 people, 140 wow. bots that were on my thing. And so I think that, I don't know, does that, does those, those bots do hurt your following? Does it? Not that I know of. Um, it's unfortunately like Instagram doesn't tell us their algorithm. They don't tell us the exact things that help and hurt us. So I don't know for sure. Um, the thing about bots though, is that Instagram is pretty sophisticated and they know, uh, you know, it only takes a couple of reports to get an account taken down. So if you just leave them, Instagram will take care of them eventually. You know, they'll be abandoned. A lot. I, I personally get a lot of romance scams. So I get divorced dads in their 40s and 50s that were pilots um, or, you know, doctors or, you know, and they're just trying to raise their single daughter and they only have five photos, but they have 10,000 followers. So that's a big, you know, red flag, you know, and, or they're looking for money or, or whatever friendship, who knows? I don't pay attention to it. If it's something that, uh, is inappropriate or something then I block them. Um, I, another common bot thing is if you post something, um, sometimes you'll automatically get a, uh, a comment and it's, it's generated from the hashtags you use. So the comment will be like, send it to at the real skinny or whatever. And it's like trying to tell you to go to this profile and put, you know, send them your, your thing so they can repost it. All of that's worthless. So I delete those comments, uh, and block those people. Uh, the, I love that to hear that when you see someone else that's being impersonated, that you contact the original person. You know, I get this on Facebook all the time. People I'm already friends with will friend me. They steal your photos. You know, I've had, I've had, uh, impersonation accounts. One of my artists had a really serious impersonation account, uh, and within like one or two days got 200 followers. You know, they just followed everyone, uh, from the original account. Um, and I reported it. I asked a bunch of other people to report it, but to actually get it down, um, you, uh, you, the original account holder have to post, you know, um, you have to go through, con uh, I'm trying to say five things at once. You have to go through Instagram and they, there's a whole form and you have to take a, like a photo of your face with your driver's license to prove, you know, you're not a catfish. So it, it's, it can be lengthy for anyone who has been hacked someone has hacked into your account, there is now, and everyone should write this URL down just for future use. Uh, it's instagram.com slash hacked. So um, if your account was hacked or something happened, your account was disabled, they now finally, just now, have this page uh, with support with that. But um, honestly, Gina, I wouldn't waste your time on deleting haters or, but I would just focus on your art. If anything, it's look, making you look like you have more followers than you do. So I just, I'd ride with it, you know, but I understand the frustration totally. Thank you. 
That was a great question. Um, Wyatt, you might have to unmute. Still can't hear you, Wyatt. Sometimes if you press spacebar, it allows you to, you know, hold down spacebar, it allows you to unmute, or you can um, hit the microphone on the Zoom controls to unmute. Or if one of the hosts can manually unmute Wyatt, maybe. Oh, there we go. Can you hear me now? I can. What's your question? <laughs> my, my question is, will a copy of your presentation be available to go over again? Um, I know that Andy is recording this, so I'm happy to send uh, Moa um, a PDF of this so that you guys can go through this. Okay, you did a wonderful job. I'm oh, in another you. state at the moment. <laughs> thank you. And if you guys are interested uh, in learning more about Instagram, I do have an online course. It's only 40 bucks, and it teaches you how to post on Instagram, like from the basic, if you know nothing you know, how to do a reels, what buttons to push, all that kind of stuff. So um, that's available on my website or on my Instagram in my link. Does anyone else have any, we got five minutes, we'd love one more question. Don't be shy. Oh, Gina's got another one. Awesome. Gina, go for it. So I know somebody has said that sometimes you don't want to repeat the same hashtags over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you said that you need to look at the picture and look at the content. But is it OK to reuse the same some, some of your hashtags over and over because it fits your work? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, you know, if I go to Ann Weber's um, art. She does cardboard art, you know, she does all this awesome. So, I mean, hashtag cardboard art is kind of like her thing, right? You know, that's what the main material she uses or hashtag sculpture or hashtag sculpture art. So it's totally fine to reuse hashtags. What I don't wanna see is people copy and pasting the same block, you know, um, you want to be as descriptive as possible, just like we were talking about with the Mona Lisa, right? Um, hashtag, I don't know if it's an oil painting, but let's, you know, or whatever, whatever the medium or, you know, yours for you is sculpture or recycled objects or upcycled or, you know, um, welding or, you know, women in art, artists supporting artists. So just try to vary it a little bit. You can start with the same block and you know, cut and paste and then maybe take some out or add some in, um, but just try to be as descriptive as possible um, with, with the, the posts. So if I, I click this one, she's talking about Jeannie from Skate Gallery. And you know, these are the, the, the posts that she uses or the hashtag, sorry. But yeah, if you only do sculpture, then, you know, sculpture, hashtag sculpture or hashtag sculpture art um, should definitely be a part of it. Okay. Great. Well, unless there's any other questions, I think that's it. I really appreciate everyone's questions. Please feel free to contact me. I, I love uh, getting to know more artists. And Andy, thank you so much for this opportunity to speak with your artists. Oh, Nicole, thank you so much for joining us tonight and sharing all of this information. I actually was receiving a bunch of texts from different people saying what a great um, event it was tonight and they learned a lot. And I think uh, maybe what we might do is consider doing another one with you that's a little bit more advanced. Yeah, uh, if you're into that. it. Okay, great. And uh, so you and I could talk offline about that. But thank you everyone tonight for showing up. And uh, we'll hopefully have some more professional development with Nicole Slater in the future. And uh, good night. All right, thank you everybody.